Hi there and welcome to the next tutorial. I've had a few requests to finish off the uh, attack animations within the zombie tutorial so we're just going to go ahead and do that. So if you open up the project as it was um, we're going to, first of all I noticed a couple of bugs with the first person controller so some people had said that the, the speed variable wasn't used and uh, you're absolutely right so in order to move based on the speed uh, that you have in your public variable you'll need to add speed uh, multiplied by speed after the in the move vector after we clamp the magnitude so um, just as it is here so times speed so the star and then speed in there and then it will move based on speed and um, in testing it I also found with the first person player um, the jump speed of 5 was quite good and I changed uh, I've been playing around with this so I changed the speed to 10 and it still moves pretty fast so um, you're able to move around a bit faster now and um, you'll notice as before the zombie moves towards you when you get within a certain radius however we never quite finished off uh, it gets all the way in towards you and it uh, doesn't do the attack animation so in this tutorial we're just going to quickly do that so um, you'll notice that the zombie already has an attack animation so um, inside of all, all these um, animations that we have there is actually um, an attack animation as well so we're just going to simply use that after we've coded the um, behavior so if we just go and open up the enemy AI um, you'll kick yourself at how simple this is but we've already got everything in place we've got idle and chasing and all we really need to do is add the attack animation um, as an enum so the state that you're in is either idle chasing or attacking and um, further down in the code where we're doing the uh, the think part, this coroutine that thinks, um, we have the case for the idle. And you'll notice in all of them you have to check to see uh, when you change state to a different state. So uh, all we're going to do is add in an extra state. So we're going to add one in here. So we have a case, you'll notice it goes from here to here um, with a, a break at the end. Um, so we're going to add in one before the default here if we just type in case and we say AI state dot attack um, and then we'll do do the attack stuff we'll get back to that in a second because right now we don't actually attack um, when we're chasing what we basically want to be able to do is we need to check if the distance is less than a certain amount and if it is then we want to go into the attack state that's when we're going to change the animation and deal damage and things so we have distances greater than the distance threshold here and we set the state to idle if it if you get too far away we jump back to idle so we're going to basically replicate that and we're just going to say if and a double tap tab there to get the help up so i'll say if the distance which we've already calculated above is less than and we'll call this um variable attack threshold and we haven't created this variable yet um, so it's going to complain about it but if the distance is less than the attack threshold we want to go into attack state I'll just write some code comments in as we go so we're just going to say AI state so this lower case one is the AI state of this object um, and it equals AI state this is the big one dot attack um, we're going to test this before we add in the animator because um, we'll need to add some little bits to the animator too. Um, this attack threshold doesn't exist so I can click on this little button here and I'm going to generate a field um, for attack threshold and that should do it uh, up at the top here. This is made a private, let's make it public actually so we can change it inside of our code so make a public float attack threshold and we'll say if we're less than uh, 1.5 away from him then we'll go into the attack uh, the um, once we're in the attack we want to be able to jump back out again so we're basically going to have to do what we did before um, so I'm going to copy this this will get the distance we use the distance quite a bit for checking whether we're going to be too far or too close. Um, I'll write that break in here at the end before.
before I forget. Um, so if the distance is greater than the attack threshold, then we want to go back into the chasing. Oops, that's the wrong one. So it's AI state small equals AI state dot chasing. And right now, um, just to check that this is actually happening, I'm just going to um, do a debug dot log, I think, just to begin with. And we'll just say attack. And that way I'll be able to see in the console if we've actually triggered the attack state. So um, rather than invest more time in getting code working, best to test it first. So we should see right now that um, nothing's coming up down the console. I'll get a little bit closer and still nothing coming in the console and when it gets within a certain distance we are doing the attack state. So oh, I spelt it wrong but we definitely do the attack state. So what do we want him to do? When he attacks, well, we probably want to um, make him stop moving. Um, so what we can do is set the nav mesh agent to um, to not move. So we could do nm, which is our nav mesh agent, um, set destination. And we're just going to say we'll set it to the current position. So we, in theory, should stop moving. So uh, one more try. Put that compile and run. And get a bit closer. And he's attacking right now. And you'll notice he's still animating, but he has stopped. And, and as we move back away, he should start moving towards us again. He's not no longer in attack state. When he gets to within one meter, he stops. 1.5 meters, sorry, he stops. All right. So all we really need to do now is um, hook up the animator. So we've got the animation playing at the same time as he changes to attack state. So. We'll need the animator up, so if you go to the enemy animator, um, double click on that, you'll see where we'd set it up before. We have the, the walking animation and the idle animation, and we use the parameters to trigger um, the transition. So we're going to need one more parameter and the other animation. So if you go to um, the zombie um, into animations, and there is an attack animation, so we can take the uh, attack animation and just drag it out onto place and then we create one more parameter so up in parameters in the animator hit plus add a bool and we're going to call this attacking and then set up the transition from walk in place now We'll need to test how this works. I think it should be okay to go straight from here. I think most of the time he's going to be walking and then attacking. So we'll go from walk in place, um, make transition to attack, click on the transition, and set the condition to be attacking. Is true. You'll also, if we untick the has exit time, it will immediately play the animation rather than finish the walk in place animation and then then play it. So this will just happen immediately. And then we need a transition back from attack. So another transition. I'll go back to walk in place for now. Uh, click on the transition again. If you hadn't guessed it already, set the condition to of attacking to be false and we'll untick this has exit time too. So to test this, um, as we did before, we can test this outside of the uh, code um, just by hitting play, going over to this guy, press escape, hit attack, look back at him. So he should be um, attacking. He's still moving towards me at least. 
for a zombie yet, see what's happening. So he's dropped back to idle. Um, he's no, oh, I know why, because he's not actually chasing. Sorry. Yeah. Once he's chasing, the animation will trigger. So this this should work. Um, when we code it anyway, we'll just give it a go and see how it goes. We already have everything in place, so the transition should work as long as he's already chasing when he goes to attack. So we'll jump to the code. Um, and then we've, we've pretty much got everything in place, so we have our animator already, and we have uh, we have the states already set up. So let's just go in uh, to where we need it. So we're going to move from chasing. So we're in the chasing state. When we move into the attack state, that's when we want the animator. So we say animator.setBow and we call it attacking and we're going to set that to true and we need it to switch off again so when we're actually attacking and we we are beyond the attack threshold that means we go back into the state of chasing we can set the animator dot set bow um, attacking to be false um, right so I think that's it, so we'll test this out. Uh, just untick that for now. Come back to the game, so we're ready, here he is. So he moves into the walking in place, and then when he gets within the right distance, he should transition to attack, there he goes. And then if he goes outside the distance again, he moves back to walk in place. So it, it kind of doesn't work unless it's already walking in place. You'll notice we, we probably should unset the chasing, but I think because this works just now, we'll, we'll go with it. All right. So that's the animation part. And the player health is probably the last part that we want to deal with. Um, I'll maybe post this video and then uh, next weekend finish off that one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers.